Good morning and thank you for joining us on The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. We would, of course, first of all apologize for uh, starting off a, a little late, but uh, notwithstanding, uh, we still have a lot of these very interesting conversations coming your way this Thursday morning. I am Osao Gi Ogbonwa. And I am Annette Felix. Good morning. Thanks for uh, joining us. Um, we're going to invite Mr. Jidi Akinrutimi, a legal practitioner. Um, good morning. Thank you for being here. How are you, Mark? Fine, thank you. So we're starting the conversation this morning um, regarding Kemi Adoshu. We know the whole scandal regarding her NYC certificate, the whole um, um, gate scandal, you know, over her alleged forgery of NYC certificate. Now, the court has ruled on this yesterday. They say that she basically did not need to have an NYC certificate or even have a first degree um, to vie for any political office in Nigeria or even become a minister. She has reacted to this now. Um, so we now need to dissect this court judgment with our legal expert. Um, Ms. Hakira Timi, what do you make of this judgment you know, that the court issued yesterday? All right. Thank you for having me. Good morning to you all. My name is uh, Judy Akinu Timi. I announced that the speaker. I want to say that uh, yesterday I read the court judgment in part. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. we can. Go ahead. Yeah, I read the court judgment in part, and I can say that uh, what the, the, the court actually said, like you have just uh, placed before us this morning, is that she 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 need not tender a first degree certificate or an NYC probably an exception certificate to be appointed as a minister. Let me take us to section 146, section 147 rather, of the 1999 constitution, which is our our our, our laws that guide our the federation, our ground law. That is, there is no place, there is no part, no section in that constitution that says that before you can be appointed as a minister, you must probably tender. Can you hear me? Yes, yes please go, go ahead. ahead. Yeah, you can actually tender your NYC certificate or that of your, your first degree certificate before you can be appointed. However, we also have to look at the, the NYC certificate. The, the, so the NYC Act, the, 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 we have a, 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 an act that is set. I look at section 9, section 12, because of the time, section 17 and 18. Particularly in section 12, it says production of certificate for employment purposes. That is, if you are designed for any employment purposes in Nigeria, you must send that either your certificate of NYC or your exception certificate that is an exemption from public participation because of the age limit that is above 30. When you are above 30, you need not tender, you, 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 you only need to tender the, the exception certificate. And I look at the fact that the government held that this, that's a role of justice, Taiwo Taiwo, at Abu Dhabi, he held that because he held that since the 1979 constitution, which was enforced as at the time the former minister graduated, did not recognize dual citizenship. And other then, the minister was a British citizen. So when he graduated, the constitution did not recognize anything like dual citizenship. So as I said, she was not even eligible to even participate in any service in Nigeria. And if she, she she, she has done that. If she could have done that, then definitely it would have been a crime, according to the to the to the, to the, to the dictate of the judgment. So, meaning, at the time she graduated from the from the university, the constitution did not recognize anyone like that, any 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 participation in study. So, the constitution does not even require her to present the certificate at another time. Hmm. So, when I read the judgment, I it was a relief to so many persons in diaspora who are willing to participate or to join the government of the federation or to participate in one area or the other in Nigeria. So I I would say that there, 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 there will be a need of clarity in that judgment to some extent. Because three years ago, the, con the goal of contention was that certificate was the exception was forced. Yeah, so, so, so Mr. Akira to me, so is there still a... Is there but still a challenge? Was, was manipulated. Yeah, can you hold on? From the right direction. Uh, Mr. So Kiro, because they didn't mention anything like forgery. Because it was on the fact that whether she obtained it by uh, any means, 
it was not even appropriate because at the time he he he, he, he concluded at a, a, a first degree because the 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 ninety seventy nine constitution and that then not now which is nineteen ninety nine he would not recognize dual citizenship. All right, so I want, to, I want us to kindly we, hold on, Mister Mister Kerotimi. Can you hold on? If you can hear us, can you can you hold on? Yeah. Okay. All right. The constitution itself does not even require your first degree. Or neither your 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 staff certificate or your NYC certificate also to be part of the ministerial appointment or part right. of the ministerial position um, in the country. Jide okay, Akira to me. That was out of breath. Jide, Jide, can you hear us this morning? Okay, great. So I, I want us to take it step by step, all right? Uh, we, we, you've spoken or you've broken down what the ruling uh, meant and, of course, gone back all the way to 1999 uh, Constitution. Um, the controversy remains with regards the, you know, the aspect of forgery. So with this court ruling now, does it mean that whether she forged a certificate or not, uh, she has no case to answer? Let me, let me, let me, let me, I think this is, this is a civil suit, not a criminal action. So the court is only limited to the relief brought before it. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can. Go ahead. Yeah, so I, I, I think this, this is not a civil suit. The, it, it's left for the government to institute uh, an action, a criminal action against that. So forgery is a criminal action on its own. I said, well, this is not a civil suit brought by the plaintiff, which is a semi addition the former minister. But what I just felt is that the court didn't even capture anything on that issue. The court didn't even send anything on the issue of forgery. But the court judgment reveals that she need not even present anything like certificate. Okay. So it's not left for the government to, okay, to go outside. To ask how did she get acquired the certificate? But the stance, except on appeal, the court judgment now is that she did not even pass the case. She did not even demand any exception. Okay, so, so that is the point now. Okay, we understand these facts as you've explained it. You know, they mentioned that the 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 limit you know for you to even serve the motherland and you know for the NIC is 30 and that she was 34 years old at the time when she you know returned to Nigeria and all of that so she was even ineligible on the basis of her age but now that the courts and you know the court ruling did not address forgery at all it was about if she needed to even have the certificate at all can there be another another you know suit against her for forgery is that something you think is likely to come up like I said, if 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 the government still intend to further, you know, actually she resigned. Yes. Not that there was any not that there was any action taken against her. She resigned and she took the, the government to court just to clear the air whether she was eligible to have appointed as a minister or not. So oh. now that the court has given judgment. But I personally, I have not read the, the full judgment. It, it's just something I just, I, we need to apply to get the, the full ruling. Probably in this court, or probably next week, can, then we can get the full judgment. But as it stands, what the court was not interpreting is just the eligibility and not the, 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 the content of the criminality involved in that. The allegation from, from many was that the certificate was even forged. That's the exception certificate, which I don't want to go into much in details. But what I just feel is that if the government intends to, 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 to look into this certificate itself, an action can be, com can be commenced against her. That would be a criminal action. In okay. the of it. All right. So in the absence of any criminal action you know, against her for forging an NYC certificate, can Kemi Adonshu, you know, be restored, or can she, you know, take up any political office in the future? By 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 virtue of the judgment, you know, we are bound by the rule of law. Except it, it is on appeal. But as it stands, she can she can be appointed. She can be appointed. Okay, and and, 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 and yeah. 
I, I want us to, go, you know, also speak on the, uh, what the law has, uh, what the court has interpreted. Uh, does this in any way affect the um, eagerness of Nigerians to go ahead with the NYSE um, and, of course, get that certificate? Because if it says that you can be appointed minister without having served the nation uh, through the scheme, um, do you think this might affect the interest of Nigerians in uh, getting that certificate? Yes, to some extent. I, I, I tend to balance it up looking at the NYC Act and that of the Constitution. The NYC Act has placed it that anyone who intends to serve in the office of the tradition, in any way in Nigeria, let me use that word, you must present your certificate, NYC certificate, or that of the exemption certificate. However, the Constitution itself, in some areas of position, in the offices, did not spread that out. For example, looking at the cases of when our president, when he had in court then, I remember about Tiku and the constitution said, you need, you need, you need to go, uh, go to school. You need to go to university before you can be eligible to contest the election. He did not. The primary certificate is what the constitution says. And when you have passed through some training, you are eligible. The, the, the certificate, the primary certificate is not as well as usual. So, to me, I, I feel this like a relief to person those in diaspora. But in Nigeria, let's just come to think of it. I think it, 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 it cannot really give us more, 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 more privilege for those that, 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 that are having the, 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 the intent to, to serve the foreign land. Oh, I think yeah, I, 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 I with the intention that there is a need for us to have an amendment of the Constitution. Yeah, but, but I was just going to bring that up because um, I guess, you know, I, I think we agree that the uh, Constitution, which is the grand norm, like you said, it takes precedence over every other law or act in, in the no, country. No, yeah. And so that means that, you know, in this case or, or any other case, uh, the NYSE Act doesn't in any way matter as long as the Constitution has said that any person can be appointed minister, regardless of whether they have gone through the um, NYC or not. Yes, very well, you are correct. Sir. So I want you to, to comment on that you know, situation where, as a graduate in Nigeria, you know, for many people, you know, we have millions unemployed. It's very difficult. It's an uphill task to get a job without an NYC certificate. These companies would ask you to go get an NYC certificate and then pay you, you know, what's not even up to the minimum wage or to sustain you at the end of the day. But to, uh, you know, be appointed in political office in Nigeria, where we know that these people earn jumbo pay, you know, the, the, the law is now saying they do not need to have an NYC certificate. They do not even need a first degree. Um, I want you to comment on the, you know, duplicity of you know what the, what this is seeming like, and then the relevance of the NYC certificates in the first place. I think the purpose of establishment of the, the, the purpose of the NYC has is for at least for it's for after the, your, your 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 first degree, you can proceed to have the NYC your your, your NYC so that you can have this ethnic balance. You can travel down to as well as being in Ondo to Kaduna to just to have this kind of interrelation with, uh, with our, 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 our ICC. That is the purpose of service. And they need this mandate that, okay, when you intend to require employment, you must have that to showcase that you're a graduate. What I'm saying here, Barrister, is that would we need to amend the law such that if a political office holder does not need an NYC certificate to hold office, right, then graduates should not need an NYC certificate to get a job. Do you think that's an amendment we need to make? That is fundamental. That is very, that is very correct. There, let there be an amendment to the Constitution, to that effect. But only what that would be is that there will be no need for, 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 for graduates to go to NYC again. You see that like a choice, as an option. Whether you tell to serve or not, it's only an option to you. It's never been a mandatory thing of the university to mobilize you for service. You can as well decline that you're on the staff because the Constitution has said, okay, it is, it is not mandatory for you to, 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 to present your certificate for employment. No, so for public officers, yeah. like you have said, I think it is mandatory 
because the public figure. All right. So, so, so the amendment that you are you are asking uh, that should be made is that public officers should, re, you know, have gone through the NYSC before they can be appointed in a, a position as high as a minister. Is is that what you're you're cool. asking that should be implemented, or are you saying that Nigerians shouldn't necessarily have gone through the NYSC before they can get jobs um, in the country? Okay. What I was saying is that the amendment should be that. If there's going to be an amendment in the constitution, as in line with that of the public officers, that of the ministers or any other body, it is clear that there should be a mandatory, you should, you should present your NYC certificate or the exception certificate, looking at the years of graduation as may be required. Because you understand that the person that graduated before even the establishment of the NYC Act, which is applicable to uh, uh, the, the, the former minister's uh, seat. However, if there, should, there should be an amendment to the fact that if we don't, that, 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 like graduates, that they don't present a certificate for companies to be employed. Yes, it's not, but sometimes some, 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 some persons look at it as, as not necessary. So there should be that clause also. That, okay, it's not going to be, that, that should be the NYC Act, not the Constitution. That, when that, that you, can, you can elect. Not to present yourself for service. If it's a desire, yes. Because you can even see that now, like even those that post into uh, the, 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 the north, post into, it has caused a lot of damages, loss of life. So I think there's really an amendment to the constitution, and I don't know, human partial, that would be NYZ Act also. They should balance that amendment. Yes, yes, there should be. But we, if, you, if you so wish, because we have an intention probably to, to have a, a elective offices in the country, I think that would be better for you to answer. Okay. okay. That's my point. Yes, we do understand your points, Mr. Um, Jide. Um, yes, definitely. Hopefully, we can um, get your thoughts on this because we know that Kimi Adosho has published um, her response to this on her social media page on, on Facebook. She went on to say that this has vindicated her. And, you know, just like you said, she also mentioned that this court ruling would, you know, make way for people in diaspora who are interested in running for political office in Nigeria but have not been able to do so because of this requirement. So as the matter unfolds, uh, you know, we'll definitely bring, you know, legal practitioners like you to weigh in on the judgment. Thank you very much, Barrister, for your time on The Breakfast. Uh, the pleasure is mine. Thank you very much. I appreciate the privilege. All right. Um, you know, th this brings back the conversation, and there was a few months ago that there was a conversation about the relevance of the NYSC. You know, should it be scrapped, should it stay? Um, and I think a couple of people, a member of the National Assembly had said, you know, that they would, you know, prefer that it, you know, it stays. Um, but like you, you asked, you know, what's the relevance if, you know, you can't get a job in Nigeria without um, having gone through the NYSC, but you can be made minister? Yes, that's, that's um, unfair. You yeah. know, it, it just breaches all the principles of fairness, equity and justice that yeah. we're talking about. So, so it, it's either, you know, it becomes a requirement across board. You know, minister, mm -hmm. governor, senator, president, everybody. Or it is completely made, you know, optional. You know, so you either choose to, you know, do the NYC or not. And that, that's, that's, you know, the conversation that we should move to next. Because um, it, it doesn't really, really make sense. And I think, you know, I agree that there should be amendments to the Constitution with regards to the educational requirements you know, for public office um, um, holders. That's it, Sergei. We, we should. If we, we definitely are, should. If we are serious. And, and yes, I understand people who have made jokes and said, oh, you know, you had a PhD holder in, in government at one, one time. And all, all that, you know, those nonsense statements. Um, but I feel that we should, as a country, if we're serious about moving forward, should have amendments. Let, you know, anybody who is vying for office as high as president as high as, you know, senator, as high as governor, should at least have reached a particular educational level. I mean, that's it. Is it, it, it doesn't it bother you that to even be a security guard in, in, in a company, you would be asked for your certificates. But then a court will rule that a minister, someone who makes, and, and you know, lawmakers, people who make laws, who represent the people, would, you know, does not need to have a certificate, does not need to have a first degree. And, and that's, I think that's one of the reasons why we're not moving forward. I because remember. you have people who are not well read, who, do, who are not exposed to things, and, and you make them our leaders. I, I believe that, 
you know, when we're talking about the unfairness, it should not be that NYC should be scrapped or not be a requirement. It should be that people who are political office holders should have the highest educational requirements, should have all the certificates that are, that are important, and they should be checked so that you, you don't go and forge it like Kim Adoshu did. So, so, so we will get, we need to take the news. Uh, it's coming up uh, in less than a minute. Um, we will get back into this conversation hopefully before we end. Uh, there's some other angles, you know, that I hope that we can also throw in. I remember the NEPA, NEPA certificates um, statements that were made in 2015. I also have seen, you know, NDLEA recruitment list and it doesn't look good. Um, but we'll talk about it, you know, when we come back. So let's take a short break. When we come back, the news at 9 a.m. Uh, comes up. And then we have a little bit more for you this morning. It's an extended version of the breakfast here on Plus TV Africa. Stay with us.